Hi students, Ms. Bird here. In this lecture, we're going to actually be answering two questions. First, how did Julius Caesar become a consul? And second, what did he do with that power? So as you'll remember from yesterday, we found out how Julius Caesar got a lot of popularity from the Roman people. How did he do that? If you were thinking that it was because he had those pirates brought back to Rome and publicly executed, you'd be correct. After that, everybody loved him. Well, Caesar returns to Rome and he decides that he wants to be a consul. But there's a slight problem. Rome already had two consuls and so there wasn't any room for Caesar. So Caesar was given the job of governing the Romans who lived over in Spain. There were lots of Romans living there and they needed a Roman leader to run their country. Pause and take a note. Well, governing Spain was not exactly Caesar's idea of an important job, but he knew that at that time it wasn't the right time for him to become a consul. So in 69 BC, that's probably an important date to jot down, he gathered up his men and headed over to Spain. They left from Rome and went north by land through the Alps to get there. On the way through, they met a whole bunch of people some Gauls in the northern parts of Rome, and they were kind of wild to Caesar and his men. And they had dirt roads, and they had shabby villages, and people were dressed in rags, and goats walked between the houses, and Caesar's men looked at that, and they said, man, what a disgusting place to live. Can you imagine spending your life here? Caesar replied to that and said, I'd rather be the most important man here than second in command in Rome. Kind of gives you a hint about the type of person that Julius Caesar was. Well, anyways, Caesar and his men traveled on to Spain, where he worked hard and became popular with the people there, because he drove away the mountain bandits who kept attacking the Roman cities in Spain. But the whole time, he really just wanted to go back to Rome and become powerful there in his hometown. Pause and take a note. One day, while in Spain, Julius Caesar was sitting in his library reading about the life of Alexander the Great. His friends were with him, talking about life in Spain and when they might be able to return to Rome, when slowly they noticed that Caesar had stopped reading, and he sat with his book on his knee, staring out the window. On the page in front of him was a picture of Alexander the Great, riding his great war horse Bucephalus with hundreds of cheering soldiers following him into battle. And suddenly, Caesar burst into tears. His friends had never seen this before. This is Julius Caesar. He's so strong and stern. They were so worried, and they asked him what was wrong. To which Caesar replied, Don't you think I have a reason to be sad? By the time he was my age, Alexander was already the king of five or six different countries, and I haven't done anything remarkable yet. I should weep and be sad. When will I have the chance to become famous? Well, finally, he was allowed to return home to Rome. Pause and take a note. And upon returning to Rome, Julius Caesar convinced the two consuls that he should be a consul as well. Now, there were three powerful men who ruled Rome and Caesar was one of them. Here you can see we have busts of the first triumvirate. Triumvirate, what is that? It's just a word that means three leaders. Pause and take two notes. Well, Caesar is now a consul and he's sharing this power with two other men. But Caesar is getting more and more popular with the Roman people. They knew he was a good general and a strong fighter, and they thought that Caesar could help keep them safe from any invasions. And before long, no one really paid much attention to those other two consuls. Caesar was the only one who seemed to matter in their eyes. Pause and take a note. So while Caesar was popular with the people of Rome, 
not so much with the Senate. The Senate isn't exactly crazy about Caesar. This was because the consuls were supposed to listen to what the Senate said, but Caesar didn't pay much attention to them or to what they advised him to do, and he did what he wanted instead. The Senate did not like this. Think back to how the Roman Republic started. It started with them kicking out kings and having two consuls so that no one man could have too much power. And here is Caesar, who has made himself a consul. He seems to be the only true leader in the eyes of the people. They're worried because it seems like one man is gaining too much power. They thought that Rome should remain a republic and rule together because they were afraid of too much power in one man's hands. Pause and take a note. So, Caesar did have some ideas about making himself king, just as the Senate had feared. But he recognized that the Romans would have to love him and trust him even more than they already did for this to be possible. So, he set out conquering to become the greatest war hero ever. He thought that if he won many battles and conquered a great deal of land for Rome, that maybe he could convince the people of Rome that he would make a good king. And he treated his army wonderfully. He trained them well to fight. He fed them well. He gave them plenty to eat, gave them plenty of rest. And the soldiers were not used to being treated like this at all. And so soon, they were completely loyal to Caesar. And they followed him into battle. So here you can see there are some of the battle um, directions that Caesar and his army took. You can see um, closely, this is the northern part of the Italian peninsula. So here's Spain over here, just to give you a little bit of an idea of where we are. And take a note. Well, Caesar was a pretty good general, and he had a great army following him. But he didn't win every battle. But... He didn't let the people of Rome know that. Instead, he only sent them news of his victories and pretended that he never lost a fight so that they would have a rosy picture of Caesar. The country that Caesar wanted to conquer most was Britain, and he thought it was going to be really easy to conquer. But the problem was, it's an island, as we can see here. And so he would have to build ships and get sailors to go there. Well, he built ships, and he had soldiers on those ships to take him there. Pause and take a note. Some of the boats and men who went with Caesar to cross this water to get to Britain didn't make it. Some got lost on the way. The ones who did make it, by the time they got there, they were cold and wet and tired. They were sick of the ocean and they were ready to get back to dry land. And looking out from their boat, they got their first glimpse of Britain, a misty green island with an army waiting for them on its shore. And that army were the Celts. So the people who live in Britain were called Celts and they were tall, muscular, warlike men. In fact, they were so proud of their strength that they went into battle naked. Our Celt here has some clothes on for decency's sake. <laughs> they also wore only metal collars and tall metal helmets that made them look even bigger. And they had heavy iron swords and wooden clubs. And they painted their bodies blue all over because they thought that blue lines would magically protect them from swords and arrows. Pause and take a note. Well, the Romans arrive here in Britain and they see these huge painted warriors and they started to worry that they couldn't beat the British. Well, the boy who was on one of these boats waving Caesar's flag heard some of these soldiers grumbling and murmuring their worries. And he jumped out of his ship into the shallow water near the beach and he began to wave ashore, waving this flag of Caesar's. Pause and take a note. Well, the other soldiers did not want to see Caesar's ca flag captured because they were loyal to him. So they jumped in the water too, 
and the Celts attacked. And so the Romans and the British are there fighting in this ankle deep water right there along the shoreline for hours until finally the Celts retreated and the Romans landed triumphantly on the beaches of Britain. Pause and take a note. <laughs>